Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Humility. And this morning on the interview, I have with me Economic Front Leader, Winter Kabimba State Council. Once again, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you and uh, welcome. Uh, good morning, viewers. Listeners oh, and viewers on our Facebook page, um, we have some challenges um, with internet, but as soon as that is okay, you will be able to pick us again. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so before we went to the break, state council, yes. we were just trying. We were trying to understand what the Registrar of Society does. Yes. And this is because of this, this, this. I don't know. Wrangle that has um, taken over the country, literally, where there's a PF and then there's another PF. Yeah. And there's a, a PF president and there's another PF president and there is a PF leader of the house and there is another PF leader of the house so we are trying to understand that and I was saying how does the registrar of society come into this wrangle Chiribuanji maybe we can go over that again yeah really for the chief registrar of societies all that that office has to do is implore the PF members to comply with the provisions of the Societies Act, Report 19 of the Laws of Zambia. And the, the Patricia, if you looked at the, at, the, at, the, at the Act, it's one of the smallest pieces of legislation in uh, our set of statute books. Very easy to read. Reason is simple that it is, it is a compliant kind of legislation. All that you need to do is comply mm -hmm. with the provisions of the Act. Okay? For you to register a society, you must have a minimum of 10 members, mm -hmm. not less. Mm -hmm. you, you, you must uh, submit your objects, which must not be illegal. So you must, you must not register a society which is engaged in uh, um, wanting, wanting, wanting to to engage in illegal acts mm -hmm. or activities. Mm -hmm. you know, making sure that the so are not against national security. We'll be poaching. Uh, we'll yeah. So can you can you register us? <laughs> okay. We'll be, yes. We want to go poaching. Yes. Then the register of societies will say no, 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 no. But uh, if you know this particular object which you present is illegal, go and change it. Okay. okay. You may want to do poaching, but just go and change and say anti. Then you will register. <laughs> <laughs> then, that, then that becomes legal. So that, that really is the role of the of, of that office. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then apart from the objects, you also register a constitution. Mm -hmm. Now a constitution is what binds the, the members of that society. Mm -hmm. Okay? It doesn't bind the registrar. He or she is not part of the constitution. Okay. Because, she, she, because he's not a member of the society. Okay. So the members then sit down and design what is called a constitution and say, in achieving the objects of this society, these are the rules that are going to bind us. We are going to meet so many times a year, we are going to meet so many times a month. Just just like the articles of association, I was trying to create a parallel yes. in, a, in a limited liability company do. Okay? They, 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 they stipulate 
you know, the rules for the members, when a board meeting will be held, you know, how a shareholder can sell his shares, you know, how somebody can divest the shares, how the company can be wound up, and, and all those activities are contained in the articles of association. So, when a member is not happy, a member of the society is not happy, they don't go to the registrar to report. Mm -hmm. That I'm not happy, you know, with my association. Mm -hmm. Okay? They look at the provisions of the constitution okay. and then go to court to seek a remedy. Okay, say council, so you're saying okay. if I'm not happy, I'm I'm, I'm a member of, of this um, society. millennium society. Yes. And then I'm not happy with the way things are going. Yes. You are saying I can't go to the registrar to say I can't go to her. I can rather go to court. Yes. Okay. F firstly, you 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 speak to your colleagues in the society. Okay. And say, look, I'm not happy because according to these rules, you know, you seem to be doing something different. If the guys are interested in and uh, you know they think you know, or, or what you are talking about is not making sense, then you seek a remedy in a court of law. So you don't go to the registrar. He or she doesn't supervise the implementation, the enforcement of that constitution. Just like the Director General of PACRA does not supervise the compliance of the articles of association. I think that's the best, you know, is, you know the, the best parallel. Mm -hmm. Now, these two entities register companies in the case of partner, they register societies in the case of, of the registrar societies. They are not regulatory entities. A regulatory entity is like Zema. The Zambia Environmental Management Agency. That is not a registration entity. It is it is a regulatory entity. So it can actually go on the ground and say, yes, Siva Mene. You want to build your house here, you want to put you know your septic tank here. No, no this is going to be an environmental hazard. Okay. Okay? So Zema will come in, you know, to regulate, you know, even if the money is yours, the that you want to construct the house and everything in the plot is yours, but Zema can intervene and say, yeah, no. no, not not like this. Okay. You know, Lusaka City Council is a regulatory entity. They will say, well, you know, this is how you want to build your house, yes, but it must have windows. Even if you say, but you can go to your house. Lusaka City Council will tell you, no, in terms of, you know, for purposes of your health, your, your house must have enough windows. That's, that's a difference, you know, between, the, you know, these, enti these regulatory entities and registrative entities. <laughs> What we are seeing now is for the registrar of society's office turning itself into a regulatory entity. Mm -hmm. Can you hold a convention, you know, within the next 60 days? Mm -hmm. Can you can you uh, fill, you know, vacancies of your of your member? That is not the role of the registrar of societies. Mm -hmm. That is the role of the members of a particular society, political parties included. So I think it is important to understand this because Patricia, it is this kind of thing which is you know of getting us you know into all this perpetual and unnecessary litigation. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's not the first time that you know this act is in place. It's not the first time, you know. Why is it that the, the registrar of society only has problems with political parties and not any other uh, civil society you know, organization that, that are all registered under the same act? Why are they interested in political parties? Because the ruling party has an interest in political parties. In other political parties. In other political parties. Mm -hmm. It wants to overstep you know, its boundaries and, and start regulating even to the extent of attempting to kill other political parties. That's why you see them not worrying about the civil society organizations. Cooperatives, NGOs. Cooperatives, NGOs. They're all under the registrars. They're all under, including the churches. Okay. Whatever you have registered, you know, <coughs> this church must have two pastors. No. That's up to the church. 
That's up to the constitution of the church. <laughs> Have you ever heard the religious officer saying, you know, this church people must be praying three, three times a day? No, that's up to the church. You know? But now we are being told to uh, fill the vacancies in it. Why? That's not your job. If members, if members have no problem with that, leave it to them. So I think I think that's an important question that you raise, so that uh, this thing is clarified for members of the public. So it's not us, the lawyers, that are confusing. <laughs> you, you know, the damn lawyers. You know, it it is actually this uh, politicization in the enforcement of the law or the provisions of the law that is creating a problem. Yeah. Okay, so now specifically we have two PFs. <coughs> how, how are we going to understand that now? In view of what you have explained. It's very easy, it's very easy to understand. Very easy, very easy. PF, the, 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 the Michael Sata PF, let's say the one that was registered in August of 2001. Uh, yes. Okay. Has a constitution. It filed a constitution with the NGSO of societies. Okay. And the, in the 2010, I drafted the electoral regulations. Just before we went for the first general conference of PF in 10 years. Okay? And the, and, and, and the regulations that support the constitution are very clear. They set out the electoral college for a general conference. It's called the General Conference in PF, not a convention. <laughs> Set out the general, you know, an electoral college. And this is what the rules say. For a delegate, for you to be a delegate to the General Conference in PF, you must come from one of the structures of the party. Rule number one. So you can't just be walking around the Mulunguchi International Conference Center and then you have Nichani Nichani Chichichi Kappa at Bali Bali Musongkano Over and then over people Then you walk in and you say Eh, now in the Nifuna Okara Kosele Tel Jendo The rules say no You must come from one of the structures of the party You must come from the section or the ward or the constituency or the district or the province or you must be a member of the central committee, which is an organ of the party, or you must be an elected member of parliament. That is, that group is also considered as an organ of the party. That is the only way you can end up as a delegate at the general conference. Two, if you want to be elected at the general conference to any position, you must also be part of, of the delegates. In other words, first and foremost, you must qualify as coming from one of the organs of the party. Mm -hmm. Three, that's the only way you're going to exercise a vote. So, when the general conference is taking place, they can't go to the market and say, no, but to a short time, but vote. It's not done like that. The rules say you must be part of the electoral college. You must be one of the delegates. Now, if you look at all these provisions, <coughs> you know, what, what we did in 2011, we actually had registers by the gate there at the Murungushi University. So when a bus arrived, you know, the delegates or two buses from Eastern Province, they disembarked. And one by one, they walked through the gate after having been checked that they are, their names are in the register for that province. Only then were they allowed to walk through and become delegates. Surely, in all fairness, in all fairness, when you, when you look at all these rules, the Miles Samba General Conference on the 24th of October falls way, way below, doesn't even meet any of the qualifications under these rules. And therefore, it can't produce a president of PF. It just cannot produce a president of PF. Let's be fair and, and be orderly in this country. 
And even for you colleagues in the press, especially ZNBC, to start, you know, referring to Miles Samba as the PF president and referring to the other group as the, the given Luwinda led faction. It's not fair. But I, I, I am going to defend my colleagues. It's not fair. I'm going to defend my colleagues. Defend them. Yes, I will defend them. And I, especially, I will defend the NBC. If you are given an instruction to say, say it like this, what, what can the person who is casting the news say nothing? So, yes, I've defended them, but we can continue our discussion. No. Surely, <laughs> any Patricia, any civilized country, and 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 and, and I'm one of those people that believe strongly that we are trying to construct a civilized society in the 21st century. We must have all our institutions work under some kind of recognized rules, law and order, law and order. Okay, so even the instruction that's why that's why you see in labor law, in labor law, there is a principle if you employ a houseboy, for example, okay, and you say the guy will be cleaning your yard, and you tell him, Oh, Mr. Kalimba owes me money, go and collect my money from him. If he doesn't give you the money, beat him up. That instruction is illegal. And he is not obliged to, you know, to follow those instructions. Okay. Yes, he has a contract with you, but not to beat up people, but to clean up your yard. So he's not obliged by law to or, to obey your illegal instructions. Okay. That's why an illegal contract in law is unenforceable. If A and B exchange money to go and kill somebody and the B who is supposed to execute the act doesn't do it A can't sue the court will say but this, that's an illegal contract it's an enforceable law so let, let's try you know Patricia to make sure that our institutions and this society you know, exist under law and order, under rules, you know, that are predictable. The PF saga is very sad, even for those of us that are not PF today, because of this confusion, you know, which is, which is, which is, which, is, which seems to be endless. It seems to be endless. Okay. But, Mr. President, <coughs> very closely tied, well, not even very closely tied, they're actually intertwined and intermingled, yes. is the whole issue of what has evolved in Parliament. And uh, what has evolved, what we have seen is um, a lot of unhappiness with opposition members of Parliament, particularly mem members of Parliament, particularly those from the Patriotic Front, uh, feeling that um, they are never allowed enough room to debate, to express themselves, and I have read somewhere one of them saying that we are being treated like school children. Yes. But we are not school children and we don't go there to report in a certain way. We go there to express the real views, feelings, issues on the ground and we should be allowed to do that and fettered. Yes. For as long as we are following outstanding orders, yes. we should be allowed to do that. Now that also created a different problem. It culminated in 19 of them being expelled and before they were expelled there was a motion to impeach. I, I, I want you to allow my listeners to understand that. First of all, are these opposition independent members of parliament, are they in order, they to use their own language, are they in order to complain that they are being mishandled within the house? I think they are. This is the first time, you know, in so many years that we see this 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 kind of contestation between the speaker's chair and the members of the house. We used to read about uh, uh, the late speaker Robinson, <coughs> Robinson <coughs> as being uh, Mr. Display. Yes. That was the nickname that he, <coughs> excuse me, that they you know they gave to him. But it was discipline in terms of ensuring that the uh, 
the house of order. And he also worked within the parameters of the standing orders. Now, let me put it this way. Members of Parliament, Patricia, are not accountable to the Speaker. They are accountable to their constituencies. The people that sent them there. And, the, and the, how do you make them accountable? Give them space to debate. So, so that the constituents, the voters, can determine whether or not we sent the right person to Parliament. Now, if you stifle my freedom of expression in the House, how do I represent my people? What do I say to my people when I go back? So the Speaker must be conscious of this fact that the members of Parliament, they are not at her beck and call. They are there on behalf of the people that elected them. Not even the President. Okay? They are accountable to the people and the political party. In terms of, you know, or for those that, you know, are there on the party ticket. For the independents, just the group that voted for them. So, the Speaker is not supposed to engage himself or herself in a debate with members of parliament, which is what we have seen yes. recently. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. Go out. Yeah. You know? Not even, not even at some of the school was I treated like that. Yes. I don't remember a teacher at some of the school telling me, get out of my classroom. Because it was not his classroom anyway. Okay? So, so, so the, 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 the role of the speaker is the, to conduct the business of the house in an orderly manner. You know, honorable member of parliament, you know, for Kabushi. And another one stands up, point, point of order. Okay, a point of order has been raised. You know, honorable parliament for Kabushi, please sit down. There's a point of order that has been raised. Sometimes people just want to cry, to crack jokes, you know, so that the, the mood in the house is lightened, yes. you know, and the people can relax. Yes. And you know, when there is heat, when there is tension in the house, you know. The, the speaker must give them that latitude to do that. Nelly Mood doesn't seem to do that. I don't know what the problem that she has with PF. I don't know what problem that she has with PF. But certainly, she is not being objective. And, and this is where I have problems with the, uh, uh, the women movement. Oh yes, they went to show solidarity. NGOCC goes, you know, to, to show solidarity, you know, and it is aired. Um, they were condemning, you know, the Nigerian members of parliament, the victims. They are condemning the victims <coughs> because, you know, uh, Nelly Muti is a woman, you know. So I'm saying to myself, I hope they can go and look for the chief registrar of societies. The one who has been moved from her position in a very ceremonious way. If really NGOCC is a genuine women movement, there is another woman here who has suffered the injustice. I want to see and basically over the same matter. And basically over the same matter. I want to see them go and visit her, even at home, and take cameras there. So this 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 psych that uh, this is about uh, a, a woman. Even a woman must do the right thing for God's sake. Okay? To get to the impeach impeachment part. So the MPs <coughs> decided. Because the speaker herself now is in breach of the standing orders. They must be in, in picture. Okay, so when you say she was also in, in breach, explain that. What exactly happened for her to be in breach? Because, be, because but, uh, but, but, there was a train of events. Yes, yes, definitely. And the train of events now was, 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 was for her not to allow members of parliament 
to express over, to finish, over, again. over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you think that the member of parliament is talking nonsense, Mosi, Mosi, yeah. That that is or her that is his right or her right. Mm -hmm. Let her expose himself that herself. That's as Bachiri Jones. That's as Bachiri Jones. But as a camper still. But as a camper, I don't know him. You are not the judge. You are not the voter. Okay. And that's why this development of Parliament Radio is good because people listen in. So. When the, when you start curtailing, you know that freedom of expression, then certainly you yourself as speaker are in breach of the standing orders. Okay, we get it now. When you start stifling, you know the freedom of expression, the voices of members of parliament, then you yourself are in breach of the standing orders. Okay, so the members of parliament decided we are going to impeach you. Just the way a president is impeached for not observing the provisions of the constitution. Okay? So this is where we are. So this anarchy, this anarchy we are seeing in parliament, the root cause is the manner in which the speaker is handling the, the proceedings of the house. Can it be corrected? It can be corrected, but it, to be honest with you, when I look at it myself, <coughs> this, is, this is an issue of attitudes. Okay? This is an issue of attitudes. And, and we can make comparisons here. I was in the house when Dr. Patrick Matibino was a speaker. Yes. Okay? And I've tried to create this paradigm that the difference between Nelly Moti and uh, Dr. Patrick Matibini was that one has been or was an active member of a political party. Nelly Muti was an active member of UPND. She was in the legal team of HH. So she went to parliament as a partisan or on a partisan ticket. Patrick Matibini was never a member of PF. He was not in the legal team. The head of the PF legal team was State Council Bonaventure Mutari. And I was a member of that legal team as Secretary General of the party. Dr. Patrick Madubin was nowhere near. Not even a single day did we go to consult him on any legal matter. So when the President Sata said to me, can we head hunt a speaker? We didn't even know who to pick. We didn't even know who to pick. We didn't even know who to look for. We had two candidates. The first candidate I went to approach was the retired judge Munyinda Wanki. Oh, yes. Because he was at the said to me, find me a speaker. One, he must not be member or she must not be member. That's what he said to me. Very clear instruction. I don't want a member. Two, he must either be come from northwestern province or central province. So I saluted. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and I left the office <laughs> to go and head the hunt and speak. I went to to Honorable Mr. Justice Wanki and he he declined and said, no, 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 you know, I don't think I can leave. You know. uh, okay, present we now. Okay. Then I went I approached the Dr. Matibin. Okay. We had to persuade him. He was not desperate for a job. Okay. He was high court judge. Okay. I didn't pick him from the street, you know, like he, he, the, the man was running a canteen, but he had nothing to do. Okay? He had an honorable job as, as a, a, a high court judge. And if he had not taken up that job as speaker, uh, uh, Patrick McBean today will be in the Supreme Court. He would probably even have been a candidate for Chief Justice. So we had to plead with him. I had to plead with him. And he gave a condition. He said, look, he said to me, my, my, my conditions of service as High Court judge are slightly better than the conditions of service of the speaker. So if I accept this job, it means I lose out. You know? I went back to the president and I said, sir, is it possible that uh, uh, 
this man can move horizontally with his conditions of service. And you know how they provide for us, you know. He said, yes, why not? I'm not surprised. This one of them we not to stick up at it. stick around with our No. There are things but it happening behind the curtains. Exactly, and I'm impressed today. Okay. There are things happening behind the curtains. I thought between you and Rasata you were just No no no. We are not we are not we are serious men. Between me and you. Very serious. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we ended, you know, we knew exactly Patricia, what we wanted to do. So, and the reason is that Mr. Sutter didn't want a partisan speaker because he had spent many years in parliament and he understood the role of the speaker. So what you're saying, basically, if I've understood you correctly, is that the appointment or the election nomination of Nelly Moti <coughs> should not have been because she's too closely tied to one party. Exactly. And this is what is causing problems. This is where these problems are rooted. Because obviously she was recommended by the president mm -hmm. as head of state, as head of the party. Okay? But a president who had no idea about uh, how that house functions. This is the difference. Michael Sart had a lot of experience. In parliament, yes. More than 20, 30 years in parliament. And uh, you know, he, he served under Speaker Nabuliato, you know, you know, you know and, and, and others. So he knew exactly the role of the speaker. And, and hence, he knew the person that we should be looking for. HH had no idea. He thought this was just about giving them a job. No, for God's sake. And look at the problem that he has caused for Parliament now and the country at large. And maybe to ask a very far fetched question how do we correct that? Can we correct it? Is it correctable? Is it something that can be corrected? Yes, if you are the serious <clears throat> men and women interested in good governance of this country, Nelly Moti would be withdrawn. If she is not withdrawn, she must resign herself on moral grounds. Because I'll tell you what, there is no way Nelly Moti, even if she remains in that seat, wielding a gun to the parliamentarians, should not command their respect. No ways. So this thing will be a daily, you know, thing in Parliament. Okay. Very, very, okay. Very quickly, State Council, because now we seem to be running out of time. I don't, yes, actually, we have about just about 15 minutes left. I, I want to, <coughs> to talk about, yesterday we saw a flurry. <coughs> Is what I would call it a, a flurry of um, people being summoned and, uh, to police stations. Uh, when Akachinda was summoned, given Rubinda was summoned, Imanuman, and as I'm speaking right now, they are all at some police station around the country. And I don't know, facing maybe a variety of charges. This morning, um, Socialist Party President Fred Membe has also appeared before the police. Now, I, I, I don't know. Does this, does this seem to be an okay thing to be happening? Three senior members of the PF again, all of them being picked up on the same day, taken to different police stations, and then this morning another opposition leader also being um, paraded before police. Is this okay? Thanks, Patricia, for that question. Look, if we went by statistics, I think we have seen more arrests and detentions in the last two years of the European in office than the five years under Bakiruba, five years of Manawasa, the five years of Arabi, the three years of Old Michael, and the seven years of Israel. Now, that must be an indictment on HH and the UPND. That in two years, if we went by statistics, there are more people detained for 
what we call in you know, law frivolous you know charges and some of the some of the charges which which don't even amount you know to an offense like which ones if if he, if he, you know or let's let's speak on the on the on what he, let's speak on a few stand Mwale says on facebook yeah okay you millers, you are being, you are, you know, you are being told by government that um, ZNS is going to to stop cheaper milk. Yeah, because you guys are expensive. Because you guys are expensive. Yes. Because you guys are yeah. expensive. Yeah. So are 280, yeah. you know. How are you going to break even as business people if you are going to sell your your milk at 280 watt? Mm -hmm. Maybe what you should do is take it. Take it. Okay. Because you'll be losing as business people. How is that seditious? How in God's name would that be considered sedition? Okay? So that's frivolous. It's frivolous. That charge can't stand before any court of law. At another party, Sianu Pango. At another party, Sianu Pango, because you will be running at a loss. Therefore, he's inciting people. Now, go on the Bafo Sina. Okay? A man of my Bafo, you know what did he say? No, no, no. For us to show displeasure about this thing, you know, Momo. Let's have a lockdown. You know, people stay away from work, you know, Momo. Did you see what my what, what Malema did in South Africa? And yet, for Malema, he was even threatening violence. He was even saying, those of you that have got buses, we don't want any bus to move on the day of the ship, you know, or otherwise. Or, 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 otherwise, you risk your bus being here. A man was even, was even threatening violence. Poor Emmanuel just says, you know, or oh, like that. Is that sedition? In a democracy, mind you, this is not a one party state. Democracy thrives on freedom of expression. And freedom of expression, some expressions will be stupid, some of them will be ridiculous, some of them will, will make sense. But that is what democracy is all about. So if you become oversensitive, you know, to what people say, you know, and I've given this example, and I'll give it to you, you know, quickly here. That was, that was the, 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 you know, the, the Newsweek during the time of uh, George Shoes, who was the Secretary, the Secretary of State of, uh, of George Bush Senior. They ran an article and said, you know, uh, we can prove that George Shoes was a Nazi uh, uh, sympathizer. Mm -hmm. And the way we prove it is that, uh, you know, he's got uh, a Nazi emblem on his right back. <laughs> They're not, and, and that and that that court reached here. I read it, and and the reporters went to him and said, "Sir, do you understand? Do you understand it? Tap, okay, you have any work about for you to prove that you are not a Nazi sympathizer." And and the judge should says, "Well, oh, my bombs are my private cartoon, so since I'm on the since I'm on the okay, freedom of expression in a democracy." The problem is that you have people that proclaim democracy when they are dictators even to their own wives. Mukazi wako sakamba. You know, wako sakamba. But what do you mean? If you can't practice democracy with your wife and with your children, how can you be you know, a democrat as minister? How can you be a democrat as president? It's a contradiction. But, but, but very quickly, there's, 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 there's a news item that has just come through and I want to share it with you. As you are aware today, the Minister of Information, who is also a um, UPND spokesperson, was having a press briefing, and this is what he has said. Basically, the government has disclosed that the Registrar of Societies, the Chief Register of Societies, Tandiwa Mende, was removed from her position because she sneaked documents to patriotic front lawyers without following procedure. What is the procedure? That is, uh, Mr. Mwentwa says the registrar was being mischievous by releasing the documents to the patriotic front without following procedure. That is now at the press briefing. You know, you know the problem that I have, Patricia, with the with the UPND is that it is such a, a you know a disorganized entity, 
and it's a pity that a disorganized agent like that has reigned for power in its hands. They shouldn't. UPND should have been nowhere near, uh, you know, the colleges of power. 2.8 million people voted for it. Yes, because of this uh, disorganized, oh, they didn't know. And they walked into the future and come back, they will not have voted, you know. Now, if it, that is true, why haven't, they, why haven't they charged the chief registrar? Why, why have they charged with the, But with, you know, and, and then it brings me to what Home Affairs Minister said yesterday. Yes. I don't think this is exactly what he said. No. What he said was a little different. He said that no, actually, the paper she released was the wrong one. It was not the genuine one. The list of members that men they released was not the one that they, I would say, they recognized it was the wrong one. Uh, look. And now the spokesperson is saying, <coughs> He hasn't said whether it was right or was wrong. He's just saying she was being mischievous in releasing it to the PF. The 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 person I said earlier, <coughs> the person charged with that responsibility in that office, the chief registrar, mm -hmm. not the minister. Okay, the minister, for God's sake, is a policy maker. He is not an administrator. So the person to tell us whether or not that document was legal is a chief registrar. And if somebody contends that it is not legal, they must go to court, not to the minister. The minister is not a court. He can only express an opinion. But the fact that they have not charged the chief registrar with any offense that simply quietly in fact, if that letter had not been released, you know, on Facebook, we wouldn't even have known that she, she is not there. The fact that they still still tried to move her out, and now we are being told, quoting the minister during yesterday's news bulletin, you know, uh, an office of government can be transferred to go and perform other functions. So if she is uh, guilty of uh, mischief, why, why are you transferring that to go and execute other functions? Same government, same office. Mr. Metro also said okay. that Ms. Mende was lucky that she was only redeployed and not fired because she misconducted herself. She is not lucky. It's because, <coughs> it's because what she did was right. So don't even try you know, to, to uh, sound as if you have done her a favor. No. You haven't done her a favor. You know in your heart of hearts, Cornelius and the minister and your president, that she did nothing wrong. I don't think that a senior lawyer, you know, with the status of, you know, in the name of Makebi Zulu, you know, can go and get a document, you know, which is which is illegal. I don't think that you know he has a name to protect. Thank you. Okay, so let's be fair to other people. Let's be let's learn to respect one another. Okay, and then also, so then how does this speak to the whole thing of the UPND has been involved in trying to um, break the patriotic front party? To annihilate it. There have been these assertions and allegations, and everybody has come out and said, No, we're not involved, just clean up your own house, and so on. But now we see this this one speaking, this one speaking about a matter which maybe should not involve them, but now they're all involved. Yes, yes. Why, 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 why is everybody in the UPND speaking on this PF saga, for want of a better term, if they are not interested? Why do they leave it, you know, to to be able to sort out? And there's a lot of manpower to protect uh, Miles Sampa. And there's a lot of manpower to protect uh, Miles Sampa. Whoever, you know, would waste their bullet, you know, in Miles Sampa in this country, I have no idea myself. <laughs> okay? Even that to slap you. There's you no know? need. There's no need. Well, there's no need. Well, I'll put it up. Well, I'll put it up. I mean, I said, I said, during Vasata's era, you know, 
Miles is job was to test the microphone so that those of us who know politics can talk. Hello, hello, test one, two, one, two. <laughs> After that, test you. Then we will, you know, we start speaking ourselves. Are you speaking in fact? Fact, fact. I've never, I've never been in, you know, or, or mischievous myself. I speak fact. There are two people, three, in fact, responsible. <laughs> uh, so we didn't stand up. Uh, Kaiser Zulu, Miles Samba. They went ahead of us to go and set up the PA system. I don't know what to do. 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 How in God's name would Miles Samba today be a presidential candidate? from testing a PA system. What is wrong with this country? Are we short of people? Sure. So that is what we know ourselves that come from PA. That's why you saw, even the composition he was given, you know, deputy minister, you know, in the Ministry of Finance. Could you have done much wonder? Okay. Because he was the one maintaining Vasata's accounts, co finance bank. He was the one testing, you know, the PA system. So surely, in that, in that, in Mukudia, Simba, Mufana, Mufasa, or or in Kuku, Simba, in that day, yes, Mufasa, or Kapendo, let Mufana be what he bakuru bago, but let Kudia Kuku have. That is what your mind was. For anybody, but you have to dream in their wildest dreams that Miles can lead a political party. Please, to a combat, to a papata. Why do you want to kill this country? I have five minutes before um, I technically come to the end of the program, but I was thinking maybe I could extend it a little bit so that I allow some callers after the break. But in these five minutes, with all that we have said, it seems now this entire country is gripped in the saga, <coughs> machinations around the PF, the party, the members of parliament, to the point of we are forgetting other more important things. Yes. 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 If we look by um, our president, if we look at um, our economy today, what would be your assessment on how it's doing? I see the, uh, the Kwacha touching um, uh, 23, and I am thinking to myself, are things okay on the ground for ordinary people more ordinary than myself i am struggling but i'm thinking of more ordinary people than myself what is happening and what can we do about it you know the problem is that it is suddenly that what is keeping hh and his team awake at night is fear and not the livelihood or welfare of the people I thought that the president would stay awake at night, Patricia, to figure out the welfare of the people. Not he. And why do you think he doesn't do that? Because because of the events. Of all this, you remember we we just come from this other you know saga of the TPP, you know yeah. we came from the saga of Miringolungu. I don't know if any GOCC went to see that lady though. Exactly, I don't I don't think any GOCC went you know to, to see you know. Okay, Sandra Baka Bireko, you know see you. Sandra Baka Bireko, okay. They need to speak to Nelly Muti so that he, he can speak to one she can speak to one of the donors that were passing on Dalama. That, that is the problem. Everybody is up, you know, for payment in this country. Okay? Now, if, if you look at the last two years, you know, of, of uh, UPND, it has just been one saga after another. Okay? TPP, Kabushi, you know, and the, and the what is that? Uh, uh, Malangi is the constituency, you know. Minungolungu kwacha, minungolungu, you know. It's just one saga, you know, after another. The only time when HH seems to be talking about the economy was when he was pursuing this restructuring uh, uh, program, which, in his understanding of economics, would have actually, you know, was going to bring mana, you know, or, or, on Zambian soil. After that, he has forgotten about it. 
He's <laughs> it, it, worried about whether or not he, he see or is coming back to politics. That, that is what he preoccupied. Whatever he goes to address him, you know. Even if it, even when he, the meeting is about agriculture, he's talking about Alewelera for PESA, PESA. But it's an agricultural meeting that he has going to officiate that. You know? That is what he's become so paranoid. It's, it has become an existential issue, you know, to him. That is where the problem is. Now, as he is doing that, he has a runaway economy. The economy is holding a general conference. Okay? He has a runaway economy. Mm -hmm. 24 euro to a dollar. You and I know, Patricia, that this economy is sustained by small scale business people. Ladies that have been going to China to go and buy tiles, to come and resale, you know, or the, the, the young men that have been going, you know, that have been ordering motor vehicles from Japan to come and buy and, spares, you know, and buy spares, you know. They are the ones that have been sustaining this economy. All these businesses have collapsed because of the rate of the quarter to a dollar. He doesn't seem to worry. He's worried about the, the authenticity of the document from the register of societies. So, even these issues of sedition they are talking about, you know, against the man of Mamba, Nakachinda, you know, and whatever, you know. The, the sedition is actually being cultivated by government. The people are angry that they, they are going to bed hungry. That they can't look after their families. What, what, what? This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.